Fear statement starts, I think, right? Thinking, thinking is not good, right? It's all about data. It's all about data confirmation. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Monday edition of uh, the Access of uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great weekend. Just kind of a uh, quick review. Last week snapped uh, a four-week rally that we've seen uh, very, very aggressively uh, on the queues, all, all the major indexes. And the question going into uh, this week was, well, is this a normal uh, orderly kind of back test, healthy back test for these stocks to kind of regroup, right? Regroup, get their feet underneath themselves, or is this truly, right? Is this truly uh, a reversal back to the lows? A little bit dramatic. Again, it's just one thing I, I'd like to share with a lot of you guys who, unfortunately, the only only uh, you know exposure you have to trading is social media, okay? Not every trade needs to go to the moon and not every stock needs to go to zero, right? There's just plenty of trades. They're just trades, right? That, that's all they are. So it wasn't the top. You can't call it for the top and you can't call this for the bottom until things really play out for several, several weeks. Treat everything as a trade. So going into this week, the, the question was, well, what's gonna happen next, right? You have five straight days of selling, two and a half percent decline uh, last week uh, on the NASDAQ 100. Really not a lot of earth shattering moves considering the, you know, the massive, massive move we put in on the Qs and the SPY. And we talked about the SPY hitting the 200 day moving average. And the question was what was gonna happen next? And, and that's the whole point. We keep on reiterating the point uh, on every single uh, nightly update, you don't have to guess what happens next, right? That's the whole point of all these random little lines that are not so random, right? They're giving you clues of what's gonna happen next. And we knew how important this whole level was. So this morning we saw a pretty aggressive gap down on all the indexes. Um, as you can imagine, majority of our charts, again, so look, big gap down today, as you can imagine, all of our short setups, or at least the majority of our short setups were are making their moves, literally their, their average true range moves pre-market. Now we have to find, our job is to kind of find uh, the value uh, for the rest of the day. And that's exactly uh, what we try to do. We'll get to the individual pivots uh, in a second. But the point is, again, what happens next? Now that we saw a 600 point decline on the Dow today, uh, pretty much everything 2% plus uh, declines on all the major benchmarks. The question is what happens next? And here's kind of where we need to, you know, just really look for, with our eyes. And, you know, today uh, was an important day. When they did try to rally the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ got stuffed right on the 20 day supply, which is very, very important because later in the day, it took out this double bottom here at roughly 315. And this is now the first close below this 315 level. And again, as we talk about uh, all the time, if you believe in the theory, and this is the whole point of the PS60 theory, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here, you know, follow along, right? Here's demand, then here's demand, then here's demand, then here's demand, then obviously the next logical area would be this 310, 311 area. And if you take a, you know, if you take a step back and really look at what's going on here, this is you know, all in the midst of this magnificent, magnificent rally uh, that started when we reclaimed the 50-day moving average in the first week of uh, first week of July. So again, for, for for the winds to change, to really go into sell bias mode we would have to close below the 50 day moving average and we're still 14 points above that. So for the time being, again, we're not trying to guess where the market is gonna be two days from now. We're not trying to even figure out where the market's gonna be by tomorrow. What we're trying to do is take the research that we have today, right? Like right now, I've, I went through a lot of charts um, and I see a lot of channels to the downside. Um, and, and the only thing we're trying to do is take our research, what we, what we find tonight, and seeing if they can confirm. And if that correlates with the cues giving back this bottom channel here, then we all, at least we know that this 310, 311 will be the next area of measure potential. If the cues gap down and start reclaiming back the 315 level, then we're gonna know it's actually a very, very bullish thing. And this is again, kind of the big macro picture that this was just an orderly back test 
uh, into rising support, which would be fine as well. But the most important part is, again, guys, and I keep on reiterating over and over and over again, because eventually it goes into your subconscious. Stop with the opinions, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what I say. Nobody cares what you say. It's all about what these stocks say. It's all about what the price action says off these key levels. And if these key levels start to fall, well, then the next price action will, will put a next level to the upside. And the most important part is, Always understand the biggest picture, the bigger picture. Always understands stocks don't go straight up in a trend. Stocks don't go straight down in a trend. Just for example, here, right? We had a seven month decline. Seven month, really aggressive monthly decline on the NASDAQ 100, right? And just because this was a macro, macro trend to the downside, look how many days we had back to the upside, right? So this is kind of the reverse. So here's your macro big picture idea, right? And now we're just getting a few days, three or four, well, actually five days now of back testing. In a perfect world, and this is kind of, in my opinion, what, what I think both sides would like to happen to, for tomorrow, right? We The fact that we close below the bottom of the range here, right? This whole purple line here, and we do have measure potential, the 310, 311 on the Qs. From the bull side, right? If you're a bull, you would like to see a gap down, okay? You would like to see a gap down and test this 310, 311 area, trap shorts on that bottom range and start rallying red to green, okay? On the bear case, you actually want to see a gap up, okay? And the reason why you want to see a gap up is you want to see, you know, bull, you know, you want to see uh, novice bulls start buying stocks pre-market, start buying stocks into supply pre-market, okay? Keep this in mind. Again, we just broke this little channel here, right? And the optimum thing, what would happen is if these stock, if these um, if these traders get get trapped on a gap up, right? On a gap up, on quote unquote, a gap and run gap up, and they start going right on the day, then yeah, then you could create a very, very premium high probability because if we do confirm the bottom channel, then we will go to 310, 311. So that's kind of the case from both players. Uh, obviously, it's very, very tough to turn around and go, well, I really, really like the market because, again, you have to give a reason why. You can't, you can't just turn around and say, well, the market sold off five days in a row from the highs. It's a reason to buy. No, it's a reason to buy, but it's a reason to buy at random prices. You have to really turn around and look at levels and see why they are signaling a very, very great area. Now, again, if you want to get long off this 310, 311 area, I get it. If you want to get long tomorrow, if we gap down and we reclaim the 315 level, I get it. But don't just turn around and say, well, I think the market's a buy because, right? There has to be a technical reason involved. If not, you are guessing, you're gambling, you, you know, you're putting, you know, you're taking a quarter, right? You're taking a whatever a dime, flipping it up in the air, landing heads, lands and tails, and hopefully you are correct. So make sure again, no matter what decision you make, right? Based on your trading history, your, your trading experience, your account size, whatever type of trader you are, at least have a technical reason behind the reason you want to buy something, the, the kind of reason why you want to sell something. If your sentence, right? If your statement starts, I think, right? Thinking, thinking is not good, right? It's all about data. It's all about data confirmation. And it makes I me mean, more, most important part is waiting for these things to kind of confirm uh, your thesis. So kind of, they get, that's it. That's kind of what you want to see tomorrow. Uh, bears, you want to see a gap of go green to red. Bulls, you want to see that flush out, right? That flush out, throw the baby out with the bathwater, trap shorts, 310, 311, and then go red to green. That ideally would put in a very, very bullish scenario. But again, we don't know what's going to happen. All we can do is prepare on both sides of the market and making sure we are looking for the market on the reality, okay? Not the reality we want, right? But the reality that we have. Uh, after the close, you got Pan W in the uh, internet security space. Uh, came out some pretty good earnings. Uh, announced uh, a three for one split. On the other side, you have Zoom, right? I use Zoom. A lot of you guys use Zoom. Um, you know, and not good, right? Not good. The whole, you know, stay at home play that uh, the stocks that, that really, really benefited from uh, all the pandemic, right? They're not growth stories anymore, right? They were just basically necessities at that time. I personally love Zoom. I think it's a really good product, very easily used and just affordable, right? I think it's affordable for small businesses, individuals, whatever the case may be. Uh, but again, the market has spoken. And if you look at the daily chart, it's taken down this whole big channel here at 96, which uh, we'll get we'll get to that in a second. And now you have room all the way down to 79 uh, in the next couple of weeks if they don't buy the dip, right? That's the most important part. We don't know, okay? We don't know what's gonna happen there. So that's it, right? That That is it. So uh, let's talk about today, right? Let's talk about today. Like I said before, uh, again, we, we had a lot of, you know, pretty, pretty much what we were looking for on the video where, you know, preparation for the for Monday, 
uh, was, you know, reversal, c continued back test. Uh, we talked about this again. Here was the kind of the email, uh, well, at least the portion of e the email that goes out uh, every single day here. You know, here is the levels of interest on on the queues and the spies, and they all gap below those levels. Here is the initial, what we wanted to, right? 77, you can see these prices are way below, uh, way above, excuse me, uh, where these stocks opened up. So my whole point was, well, let's see what happens. Let's see what ranges we can find. Again, we're not looking for the closing price to be right in the direction. We're just looking uh, to win our interval. So Tesla, again, not a big move. Uh, 66 held twice pre-market. That's also the 20-day support. If it builds below, can see 850. Didn't do that, right? There was a buyer there sitting there in the low uh, 860s. Got down to the 860 level. Turned into a kind of a cup of coffee. Uh, trade nothing big there. I'm still watching it again. Uh, they do split in a couple of days uh, guys Just just understand one thing about uh, the valuation whether the stock is at 288 which is going to be uh, Post split or whether it's now at 870 the valuation for the company is the same Okay, institutional money flow is not going to come in there because the stock is cheaper. It's a retail mentality It means absolutely nothing institutional money flow is still going to go into into Tesla whether the stock was 1200 400 200 500 because it's still a massive growth story it's still a cult stock and it has ridiculous amounts of liquidity so liquidity is not going to change right maybe the average true range is going to change a little bit but keep this in mind tesla even at 288 290 is still a 300 stock it'll still have massive average true range so if you're if you're buying on those on the wives tale of well you have to buy the stock ahead of the split man just take a look at what a lot of these stocks you know, i'm not going to go into it but take a look at a lot of these stocks did uh, prior, you know, prior thinking when you got to get long into the split, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Again, Tesla's Tesla, nothing's going to change. The dynamics of the company is not going to change. The bull case, the bear case, whatever the case may be, it's not going to change. It's all about the ranges with the stock. So if you are making your decision based on what you think you heard on the internet, just be just be conscious of the fact it's going to trade based on sentiment, not of, a, of an event of a split. That's not going to change the valuation uh, to begin with. Uh, Nvidia again uh, reports uh, later in this week. You know they they, re, they guided lower uh, a couple of weeks ago. Or was it last week? Uh, 173 held three times of bills below can flush. Should get down to the 169s. You know, the video got hit, okay? And the video got hit, um, and you can see where it closed. And, and again, this is kind of where you're looking. If you know how important the 50 day moving average is, if you've been watching this video, then you kind of know how important tomorrow's session is, right? So it took down the 73 and traded right to the 50 day moving average. This 50 day moving average gets confirmed tomorrow, right? That pretty, pretty aggressive put buying came in ahead of the earnings. But again, we don't know how it's gonna act. Uh, Meta 16480 165 that's the bottom of the range if it builds below uh, can flush more here is Meta right here's Meta it took down that uh, 65 area traded all the way down to 62 again still has more room down if the market uh, continues uh, coin held 70 twice actually coin held 70 now three times uh, never broke that 70 um, IMVT is still a little stock I like. KOS, another stock. This thing got absolutely hammered. Congratulations for all you guys who took uh, ZM, 96 macro support for builds below. Can flush. Stock is trading uh, 89s right now after the close. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, this is going to be the big one right here. This was definitely my trade of the day. I'm still holding a runner here. This 233 down, got downgraded to a sell. If it builds below, can flush. They 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 gapped it down right to that 231, 232 level um, on rising support. Once it lost its opening range lows, went down all the way down to that uh, 224 level. If this thing continues, if this thing continues to grind, starts losing that 224. I still think we see uh, 221, 222. If if. Uh, if this thing uh, continues to go, if the market continues to, to go lower. So really beautiful move on Netflix. Uh, nice move on Meta. ENVX never got to, uh, never got to uh, the 2180, 22 level. And I believe that is it. So that's it. You know, that's it here. So again, guys, we're not trying to uh, recreate the wheel every single day. We're, we're just taking, uh, we are taking all the data on the nightly research and now applying it towards the morning window. And again, just kind of a little bit of a piece of advice. If you're an active trader, again, this has nothing to do with investing or being a longer term trader. If you're an active trader, your sweet spots are between 9.30 and about one o'clock, right? That is your window for aggression because people are chasing, people are emotional, people are all over the place. By the time that, and channels are expanding. 
Once one o'clock hits, from one o'clock to like 3.30, it's a dead zone. It's a complete dead zone. You'll notice stocks are going to trade in very, very tight channels, okay? This is where you turn your account. This is where you turn around and go, I can't believe I gave back my whole day. If you, if you think about it, if you ever made said that statement, right? I just gave back my whole day. It's probably not in the morning. It's probably in the afternoon. So just kind of one piece of advice. Try to, if you're an active trader, try to get done 90, 95% of everything you do in that morning uh, window, okay? Uh, because whatever you like, whatever you like in the afternoon, you're gonna love in the morning. It's gonna be exactly the same setup. The only difference is you're not gonna be fighting for 30, 40, 50 cents. You're gonna be looking for a measured potential three, four, five dollars a share. If you stop trading in the afternoon, okay, especially as you're, you're trying to uh, grow an account, you'll be shocked what your bottom line looks like uh, it, it's year in, year out. Just, it just the value is always in the morning. Uh, and contraction always happens uh, in the afternoon. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.